Hey there, sign folk. Uh, today I'm going to do a little uh, V carving on my Shaboko with some high density urethane, some HDU. Um, I'm actually going to cut this out of what's it called? Cora foam. I can't get that right. Cora foam made by Duna USA. This um, is a 15 pound, 15 pound density. Uh, it's one inch thick and I've already coated this. Um, I've already primed it once, or I'm sorry, I primed it twice and it's got a coat of one shot on it. Um, because of both signs, two signs will be white. One sign is going to be blue, but I can, it's easier actually to, to recoat those after the fact. So, um, this project requires me to cut this board down so this is going to be the 24 by 30 and then i've got a 12 by 18 and i got the little 10 by 10 and so i'll have another a little sliver over here that's going to get cut off um all three of those are going to get v carved and i'm going to cut them on my uh shape Oco, my xxl um cnc machine and get all those uh, painted, finished, and all that other good stuff. So I'm going to go through some of this process of cutting some of this stuff. What I do for the file prep and um, and get these signs finished and uh, actually boxed up so we can actually get them out to the customer. So stick with me. This is my process. All right. So obviously this board's a little bit too big to fit my CNC. So the only thing that I do to uh, to break these panels down is to just score them with an exacto, and it'll take six or seven scores, but this is a lot cleaner than uh, breaking out the old shop saw, and it seems to do a fine job. Just watch your fingers. Here we go. 24 by 30 sign. Um, this is how I get my file set up. Um, so I'm going to start with my job size, 31, 24 and a half. That is the size of my HDU. It is one inch thick and solid color white, which is basically what we're going to do. I'm going to go up here to the import vector. And you see, I already have one, but I just want to double check. Um, because I don't think my substrate is right. So now that I know the actual size of my substrate, it's a little bit easier to lay this stuff out and that way I don't screw myself up. So, uh, import on my file. I'm going to center it on my board. Shift key. I'm going to unselect the, uh, the profile. And, um, so the rest of this stuff is actually just going to be a V carving. It's a 90 degree V carve. Um, hopefully I don't screw this one up. I did two yesterday and I don't know what I was thinking. I must be really off my game. I don't do a lot of these. So, um, I'd like to start doing more, but you got to start somewhere and, um, I'm definitely still learning. So, um, hopefully this helps you, but always double check your crap before you actually take advice from me. So, uh, anyways, we go to the V carve. Um, I know some of these letters could get kind of deep and I don't want them going too deep. So, um, I'm going to set this flat depth, this flat depth at uh, 0.175 and then we'll see, um, how that looks. So I'm going to name this uh, V carve V M D 24 by 30. Um, so yeah, everything else is V carved. It's pretty straightforward. Majority of it's black and I've got some other little coloring that I have to do in here. I think this is blue and then that's like a uh, like magenta or something like that in there, but the rest of the, all those lines should be black. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's preview it. Oh, hey, that don't look shabby. Well, that that that's pretty thin right there, but uh, not really much I can do about it. Um, the depth wise doesn't look bad. Did a bottom out? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it to me. Looks okay to me. 
we're just going to rock and roll with that. Um, so I have that set, which is good. Now I'm going to go back and actually do a uh, profile. Close this and uh, go to profile. And I'm going to cut all the way through it with my quarter inch and do four passes again. Um, uh, it looks good. Let me set my speed, which is 80. That's fine. Um, profile, uh, blue moon design 24 by 30. Uh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. Add tabs. <laughs> uh, tab. I don't know why I do this. It's easier just to click on them and um yeah i guess we'll put one there put one there and then take that one away so let's uh that'll work now cut through that son of a gun so preview all toolpaths i think we're good there i can kind of see through See the blue area there? That means that you're cutting all the way through. You can see there's a tab there. There's a tab there. Generally, if I didn't have tabs, then I'd be able to click and remove that background. But um, this looks pretty much fairly easy and straightforward. So I am going to get these files. And now I'm going to save them. On that computer. I don't know why it always lags when it does this. Uh, production files and I am going to uh, new folder anytime that I do multiple paths I like to set up a an additional folder with that information in it so that way I don't have to I don't know it just makes it easier for me to find um, and the other thing that I do is I number this. So obviously the V card was going to be the first. Um, so then I would actually put a one behind that and hit save and then unclick and then select my profile, save toolpath. And then I'm going to save this one number two. That way I know this is the first step and then this is going to be the second step. Sometimes there's three or four in there and I can't remember how I laid the paths out. So it makes the most sense when you cut it. So um hopefully that makes sense to you uh, um okay so profile should be good there you go file set ready to go and we are going to head over to the little cnc machine okay so i'm still having a little problem here so but you can see where this arch is that'll be up top so i'm actually going to put position those clamps about right here i'm just not sure how how tall that arch is so i'm going to take these clamps off and I'm going to move them a little bit closer in because that's still moving. Okay guys, uh, we uh, think we're good to go now. I've got my files loaded. I got my 90 degree uh, V-card bit in there. Got my mask down. I think I'm ready to go. Um, I think this is where I should All right, guys, so now we got a bit change. Um, we're going from the V-carve to the eighth inch end mill. Um, the reason why it's an eighth inch 
because I was afraid if I did quarter because I only allowed a half inch um, overage for my substrate width. So hopefully by the eighth inch it won't eat out. You know what I mean? It'll still have something to kind of grab a hold. And it won't break loose of the substrate. I'm going to show you another little important step that I know about but I forgot about yesterday. So because you know that your material is an inch thick, you have to make sure that your bit goes down at least an inch. So, so I'm going to take my Sharpie. I'm going to make sure that I have the set to at least an inch. Now I don't like letting the bit hang out that much um, because it tends to wobble in the center, but um, it, it is what it is. Like I said, I didn't set it deep enough yesterday with one of the other uh, signs that I was cutting and uh, it didn't cut all the way through and it actually burned the uh, mask into the sign which basically rendered it uh, that it all had to be redone so um, set that little that little mark there so it's an inch deep and uh, you uh, you should be good and you also have to re-zero the Z my XY is not going to change and never change that when you're doing tool changes like this. Set my zero, zero just my Z. Done. Here we go. Why it pulls the vinyl up. Alright, first coat of primer. Um, so, whoa, I'm doing. I'm taking my kilts, two, and a little bit of water, mixing it up to the right consistency, and I'm actually spraying it out of this gun. So, probably got. Uh, Two more coats um, before I can actually paint the black. Yeah. Um, is going to get sprayed black. Now I still have the paint mask on this. Um, it has two coats of primer on it. Um, I just use some blue painters tape. Uh, around the edges so I don't get the, the main reason why it, if if I get paint on here it makes an irregular surface it doesn't match I know that on this base coat I have two coats of primer and one coat of paint so I need to do the same on the sides if you do like three coats of primer then the finish is going to be a little different not that people really can tell between those so um, this one uh, this one's about ready to paint so I'm going to get uh, the airbrush reload it again um, and just so you guys know like I said I'm using uh, I'm using one shot again and I'm just thinning it out with a little bit of uh, turpentine down here and that's what I end up using you can get it from Lowe's or Depot or whatever um, I got these little plastic bottles I go ahead and I thin it out um, and I've got a drip stick so I know that when I mix this um, I get about two or three seconds of run and then the rest of them are drips um, that I and I just find that that works out better for me um, I'm spraying at about 38 to 40 pounds of air pressure through uh, it's just an old badger I think it's a old 100 or something I don't know I've had these things for probably 20 years um, and uh, another thing that comes in handy is these little I got these little uh, Droppers or whatever that way you can kind of meter, you know, you're not like dumping paint or you know Like dumping from here and then trying to dump it in there and freaking shit gets all over the place You can see I already made some messes down there um, But it's okay um, Let's see here. Where are them little there we go. I think I got these from Hobby Lobby um, Whatever those are 
and I think they were like you know, five bucks for 20 of them or something like that 25 it says right there it says 25 of them those things come in really really handy so I'm gonna flip this back over to time-lapse and um, go ahead and get this painted so I can get this thing shipped out because I'm so far behind right now <laughs> 